Hey, what's up guys and gals? Chef PV here, Troy. Um, I was helping somebody locally just now and realized that this is another one of those just random videos that I just need to make and hopefully it'll help some people out. Um, I hope that people that watch this video thinking that this is going to solve whatever problem they're having um, do recognize that this may not be a fix for everybody. Um, do recognize that this is going to take a little bit of digging on your own. These frequency charts that I'm about to show you or that are up on your screen are not standard frequency charts and that's exactly what I'm trying to make sure I communicate. Though, I'll be honest, I ramble, things happen. So I just hope to walk through this and I'm not even going to complicate you by showing you any hardware other than what you see on the screen. So what you need to know about matching your proper channel on your VTX or your video transmitter and your goggles or your display device if it's a uh, monitor is not all VTXs and receivers are keyed the same way when it comes to channels. Some receivers and video transmitters, for instance, if they're Fat Shark, use the Fat Shark band as band number one. A lot of other band or uh, hardware uses band one as band A or frequency band A, which is 5800, 58, uh, I'm sorry, 5865, 5845, uh, 5805, 5785, blah, 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 um, as band one. So if I had these two devices in front of me, a goggle that had a next wave 5.8 um, standard RF module in it, and I had this, which is actually on one of my tiny whoops, which is a um, FX797T video camera and transmitter all together. Then if I were on band one, channel one on the tiny whoop, I would be on 5865. If I was on band one, channel one on Fat Shark, I would be on 5740. I would not be able to see anything more than likely I shouldn't. However, notice that there is a 5860 and a 5840 on the Fat Shark band, and there is a 5865 and a 5845, even a 25 and a 20 over here. 5805, all of these, look at them, they're all off by just 5 megahertz. Aside from the first one, all of these channels, you can actually come within five megahertz if you're on the same band and just changing channels. So if I had bad video on my little tiny whoop five feet from myself, I would look and I bet you that I would find that I was on band one, channel seven on one of them and band one, ch ch channel one on the other. And I would think that, hey, I got a great picture and then I take off or I throttle up and it disappears or goes away, I would think that I'm on the right channel except for it, without looking at the physical charts, you will not know that you're just five megahertz off. Five megahertz is a huge amount. Now it's not a huge amount that you can fly with somebody that's only five megahertz away. That's why we don't power on near people um, whenever we don't know what channels we're on and all. But you would still see a great picture at standstill. And then as you applied power or got further away from yourself, you would immediately see a, a huge degradation. Anytime you have a very rapid degradation um, in the channel or in the picture, check your channels. That's what this video is about. Just check your channels, pull the charts for your stuff and look at them. And I bet you, you'll see um, that you're just off a little bit. And, the other part of this, not all of your cards are going to be 100% accurate. Sometimes the dip switches are flipped around on the picture than on the board. So this is a good example actually right here. This is the next wave module. Let me see if I can zoom in. So the next wave module has dip switches and they show you the positions. Well, what's the position? Some people say that black is the button. Some people say white is the button. Uh, in the next wave, I'll tell you white is the button. But on some documentation, you'll find that companies use black as the way to signify the button. So it's just, it's trial and error at times. Dip switches kind of suck because of that. Um, always look at the on off on the actual physical switch. 
is it positioned in on and off the exact same way that it is in the um, picture on you know any documentation? If it is, great. If it's not, you're probably going to have to look at it a little deeper and you might find out that you know, you're know you just looking at the picture wrong or something. But um, bottom line is don't ever swear by a chart. You never know. Um, the only real way is to get some sort of digital channel locking device. So like receivers that have the channel locking on them feature or digital readouts showing the actual channel. It's another great way um, to know exactly what channel you're on. I use the LaForge, so you know you could go with that. You could also go with uh, Lumineer has just a standard receiver. A lot of different receivers have the, that ability. So anyways, hope I helped, guys. Hope I helped solve some of your channel matching. Um, fly safe, fly smart. Just fly, guys. Have fun.